showing their in the race today you know really wet we've had some drizzling rain and then some real heavy rain and uh, all of the firestone cars are moving to the front all right we'll keep track of that story that's al spire let's go to marty one of those guys that did a lot of the testing at firebird with that 400,000 gallons of water for al spire is in third place right now alex zanardi zanardi got all the way back to 11th at the start now he did get a little bit aggressive we didn't get to show you this but watch what happens he's trying to move for position to move into second and ends up going a little bit off course and then gets back on. So uh, even though he's done all that rain tire testing, even he can get a little too aggressive. But keep your eyes on, guys, because before they went yellow, he was turning the quickest laps on the track. All right, thank you, Marty. Danny, let's talk a little bit about the driver's perspective in all of this. Well, the drivers are calling in and they are complaining, and I've been in that position. When you're out front, your car's working very well. It's a great place to be. But these are very tricky conditions. They're changing as the harder it rains. One other thing you've got to consider is they sit in here under a yellow. All that spray has been coming into the cockpit. It's cool outside. These guys' driver suits are soaking wet. Their body temperature's going down now. They're going to start getting some chills as it goes on. That's, again, not a very comfortable position. But when you can't put the power down on the road, as we saw with Bobby Rahal and a few other ones, when they're just barely touching the throttle and the car is jumping sideways, they can't see in front of them, these are bad conditions. Oh, well, we saw it take out both Bobby Ray Hall and Patrick Carpentier. Not out of the race, but certainly off of the racetrack. There's the view from the back of Michael Andretti's car. Now, if you weren't with us for our On the Grid program before this race over on ESPN2, we want you to join us for a little intramural competition among the television announcers here at Portland. The ESPN announce team on the left took up the challenge from Gilles DeFerrin and our Brazilian colleagues for a pit stop contest. Everybody got ready after a little bit of practice. And some bad habits overcome. Marty Reed made sure Gilles DeFerrin understood the significance of what was about to unfold. Eric Walker flipped the coin. Brazilians won the toss. And you decide who won the race. That's Russ Thompson, our statistical guru. On the right front, Marty Reed. Left front, left rear, Danny Sullivan. Yours truly, right rear. And in the end, by the merest of margins, the Brazilian team triumphed. Although we were good sports about it, I must say. All except for Marty, of course, who threatened bodily injury to driver DeFerrin. But it was good fun all around. We are still under a full course caution. Still a lot of standing water out there on the racetrack. And it is still falling here at Portland. We'll be back with more of the Budweiser G.I. Joe's 200 from Portland International Raceway and the Rose Festival. Stay with us. Tonight, Rob Beck, Frisco Fireballer. With Barry Bonds, part of the giant one-two punch in the NL West. Dodgers-Giants, a Sunday night baseball game of the week. Tonight at 8, only on ESPN. Welcome back to Portland International Raceway, where we remain under a full course caution, although we expect a green flag shortly as the cart Budweiser G.I. Joe's 200 continues. Now, here at the announced position, I am joined by CART's Vice President of Communications, Ron Richards. Ron, thanks for joining us. Let me ask you how the decision was arrived at to stop this rain, or at least to, to throw the yellow for water out there. Well, Bob, what we have is a situation where there's quite a bit of standing water, and we want to make sure that we're doing everything we can to keep the track as safe as possible. This really is a situation that's similar in many ways to what we had in St. Louis, where we continue to run for many laps under yellow before we were able to go back, but you don't want to lose the racetrack here, and keeping the cars out helps keep uh, the water off the racing line. Now, at the same time, you have to be sensitive to the fact that you've got a tire competition going on out there between Firestone and Goodyear. The relative merits of each tire's wet weather capability has been demonstrated in the past. Surely that must enter into it as well. Well, as I said, you know, we really do everything we can to make it as safe as, as we can. Certainly, the tire competition is something that's very heated, as is all the competition in the series, but we're, we're happy that we... Uh, have the opportunity to uh, uh, do what we can to keep the track as it is, uh, as we have right now. Is there any particular part of the racetrack that corner workers are telling you is, is particularly bad? There's a couple of spots around the track. I would have to look back right now. I don't know off the top of my head. There's a couple of places that we had to work extra hard on to get the water off. Now, how long do you think we might be down for this? I mean, we said we've got a green flag coming out shortly. Do you expect this kind of interruption throughout the day? The weather forecast looking better? Well, the weather right now, it's a lot of come and go with the, the rain. A little bit harder, a little bit less. Right now, it looks like maybe we'll get a little bit less right after uh, this period of a little bit heavier rain. Uh, hopefully, we'll be able to get the 
the uh, race in and, and move things along as, as quickly as we can under the, uh, the situations where you have uh, less uh, rain coming down. Well, we certainly have rain coming down now. You have to be pleased with the way the competitiveness of the series has developed. Our margin of victory less than two seconds on average for the eight races we've run thus far. Yeah, the closeness of the series is something that's really uh, great for us. It's great for the fans. It's great for the competition among all of our, our manufacturers and, and sponsors, and we're really happy about that. All right, thanks for joining us, Ron. Let's get down to Gary Gerald in the pit lane. We heard from Al's Fire and Firestone story, and of course the success they're enjoying with their new generation rain tire. We came over to Goodyear and wanted to see if anybody would comment on the situation. They declined to come on camera at this time. Obviously, they're concerned. They continue ongoing development with the rain tire. They tell us that the tire that's being used today by the Goodyear drivers is the same tire that they had grand success in the rain a year ago at Detroit with. So they thought coming in that they were confident. Obviously, now they're very concerned. So that's the situation from the Goodyear camp. We get ready to go green, Bob. All right, thank you, Gary. Mauricio Gujaman leads Scott Pruitt and Alex Zanardi. That's P.J. Jones in one of Dan Gurney's All-American Racers, Toyota Reynard, second in line. He moves to the outside to let the quicker cars come through. P.J. now a lap down. Restart on lap 25 of 98 scheduled. And once again, the rooster tail rises to the dark skies over Portland. Look at that cloud in the background. I can tell you, I've been there before. It's not a comfortable feeling when you can't see. A dance with the devil in every sense of the term. Christian Fittipaldi, Raul Boisel just behind him, and Al Enzer Jr., and then DeFerrin being challenged by... I think that was Parker Johnstone, for whom this is very much a home race. He's built a new home this year in Brush Prairie, Washington, just across the Columbia River on the Washington side. Although half the residents of his old hometown, Redmond, Oregon, are down here watching him. There is Mo Gugelman, who came so close to that long-sought first PPG Cart World Series victory two weeks ago in Detroit before the fuel gave out. There is Scott Pruitt, coming off his second career pole position, a dramatic battle between he and Jill DeFerrin. There is Alex Zanardi. Running in third spot. Dario Franchini is right there trying to take advantage of any slip by either one of those two in front of him. The order is Gugelman, Pruitt, Zanardi, Franchini, Mark Blundell having a good run again. Greg Moore, Christian Fittipaldi, Raul Boisel, Gilles DeFerrin, and Al Unser Jr., the top ten. And, of course, you can see how little spray there is when they slow down. But the problem for the driver is any moisture that goes on their visor at that stage because there is no speed in the car doesn't get washed away as quickly as it does on the straightaways. Once again, interesting wide turns by Alex Zanardi. It's worth noting that sometimes these wet weather tires work better when there's a little more water out there than when there's none at all. Well, also the fact that there's no groove out there, so there's not a lot of oil and fuel that's been dumped and rubber that's been out there when the dry conditions set in and they get out there on that clean track even though it's moist it's oftentimes a quicker way around <laughs> lots of water as you see that marshmallow effect around the tires now we've had a round of pit stops let's get down to marty reed for more on pit strategy well guys there's a lot of teams that are starting to think about this as a timed race we're past the 35 minute mark we're not even anywhere close to about the quarter mark as far as laps so they're starting to calculate a little bit more yellow and fuel will again come into play we might see this become a one-stop race believe it or not for some of these teams if the rain keeps the lap times in the 117 range the other key will be if it does start to dry out how fast how fast will those tires start to wear when it does start to dry this could get real interesting now let's talk about what Marty just mentioned, thinking this as a timed race. It is set for 98 laps, but CART also has a rule that no race will go beyond two hours in time, very much like Formula One does. And that will play into strategy, as it did on the streets of Surfers Paradise Australia earlier this year. Bob, uh, maybe it's already played into some strategy for the Newman Haas team. Remember when we did that interview with Derek Walker, we commented that Michael Andretti went by us pulling out of the pits. He came in early, got a full complement of fuel, and the crew then told him that if it stays wet, as it is now, that he's good to go the distance. So it would be a one-stop race. Now, that seems improbable, but again, you get such good mileage under the extreme wet conditions. The key then becomes, as Marty said, 
does it dry and if so how much and to the west we notice that the sky is remarkably lighter than it was just 10 minutes ago well, Gary one of the reasons they get such good fuel mileage in wet conditions is they have to really squeeze on the throttle most places they can't go full throttle so you're not opening up those butterflies in the injection system or the turbo well that was a little close for Scott anyway so they don't use as much fuel because they're very gentle on the throttle and there's probably only two spots here that they're wide open all the way around the track Zanardi down the inside of Pruitt for second place same spot he tried it before where he went wide and got on the grass and had to drop back into third after the great successes of last year it is rookie of the year season and that streak of pole positions and front row starts that ended earlier this year Alex Zanardi may have gone off the boil just that little bit he's looking for some results he's been through some very frustrating times he had the incident at Detroit two weeks ago where he and Paul Tracy went toe to toe over some alleged blocking on the racetrack Maybe a little tension showing in Alex Zanardi's driving of late well and he also had not the best IROC race uh yesterday he was said it was one of his worst days in racing and he was not real pleased with the performance I'm sure he's trying to make up for that as well and earlier we saw Bobby Rahal off the track and on Marty Reed has more on his situation yeah guys uh, talk to Jimmy Prescott uh, and Bobby's been on the radio saying he's he's honestly thinking about pulling this thing in because it's so far down and he thinks it's so dangerous out there since they have no chance of winning he's several laps down We'll keep you posted, but uh, that would be new and different for Ray Hall. I've never seen him pull it in before. Bobby Ray Hall, 10 years ago, won this race in a championship season, his second championship at the time. We're on board. Well, let's not forget one thing. If he's making a calculated decision out there, if they have no chance to score points, they don't want to take a chance of throwing that car into the fence and damaging it too badly. And then their team has to work too hard to get it back up to the position where they were before. They might just sacrifice it and say, hey, it wasn't a good day. Let's go home. Now we saw Dario Franchitti sliding by Scott Pruitt into third place. We have some other action going on. Alex Zanardi is lapping faster than any other car on the racetrack in second. We'll see what he can do when we return live to Portland. The pits have been opened up under full course yellow. Mauricio Guzelman comes rolling in to get serviced. Rain tires are being changed, so it's fresh rain rubber going on, as well as a full complement of fuel. They had just gotten inside their window. It's routine, and Big Mo gets out of here. Oh, Zanardi may have beat him on the way out. You bet he did. Alex Zanardi of the Target Ganassi crew got back on the racetrack ahead of the previous race leader, Marty Reed. Well, guys, they had an excellent stop down here, and they are very happy. A smiling Chip Ganassi knows that his driver is out in front of this race. Everybody doing the high fives, and we're going to check the wear on these uh, Firestones, see how well they held up in these conditions. All right, thank you, Marty. You look back from Alex Zanardi's car at the machine of Mo Gujelman, and the Ganassi team has done it again. You also saw Christian Danner's Lola parked in the festival turns. That is the reason for our full course caution. Coming up tonight on ESPN2, RPM tonight. They've been out of the new California Speedway in Fontana. That's where Kenny Main will be tonight to report on the day in motorsports at 8 p.m. Eastern time. And be sure to tune in Monday through Friday at 7 p.m. on ESPN2 for RPM tonight with all of the news and motorsports around the globe. On the back side, they call it the back straightaway, but some of the local racers call this the banana because, as you can see, it is not straight at all. The rain is falling more lightly now, although it is still coming down. Now, here is Alex Zanardi's pit stop. Danny, let's analyze it. Well, right there on the side, right there, is Big Mo trying to come out of the pits. This is Zanardi's car right here, and he just beats him out a little bit. But it was enough. Well, they must have been using some of our ESPN commentary pit crew tricks to get Alex Zanardi back out there. Well, I think so. Maybe the Brazilians, do you think they were down on Big Mo's car? I don't think they could beat us if we got a rematch. I really don't think so. 
Still under the full course caution. Let's get back to Marty Reed, who's been examining those Firestone wet weather tires. Uh, you can see the steam rising off, guys, and uh, we talked to the officials uh, from Firestone, and they're telling